So, Carly, I teed up my first question when you were in the back hallway. You might have heard me talk about the Supreme Court and how important that imprint is on our country. And you may have heard me say that uh, four of our Supreme Court justices were born in the 1930s. And in the first term of the next president of the United States, we'll have four 80-something-year-olds on the court. Not that 80-something-year-olds can't be on the court, but if you look at the averages, the average age of the, uh, the former justices when they retire, they all retire in their early years. So my question to you is, and the question to focus out here, because the next president could select nearly half of the members of the court, potentially within their first term. What type of individuals are you looking to appoint as president of the United States? So there are simple answers, and then there are slightly more uh, profound answers. So let me start with the simple ones. The simple truth is I would look for men or women who were like my father, because I saw what a conservative jurist, a strict constructionist looks like and sounds like and acts like. It's easy to say that I would look for people who understand what the Constitution says and stick to it, as opposed to turning it into what they want it to say. I also, however, before I would nominate anyone to serve on the Supreme Court, and you're right, this is a huge and important power that the President has, and we have seen that people, as they ascend to the Supreme Court, sometimes turn out to be different than we thought they were. And so one of the things that I would do, instead of passing off the job to interview a nominee or a potential nominee at great length to say my general counsel or someone on my staff, I would want to spend a great deal of time with anyone before I nominated them. And one of the things that I would ask is not just to see their opinions, to see the track record that they have, if there is one. But I would also ask them to describe to me occasions in their life where they were under pressure to compromise their principles. And what did they do? Because I think the truth is, many Supreme Court justices who have principles get into that position, and like all human beings, they succumb to pressure. Peer pressure from other judges, the pressure of the media, the pressure of the political process. And so it's important to know, can somebody stand up it, it seems to pressure? Yeah, really it's, it's both the campaign and the candidate herself Finally, who's been coming uh, out I would want to know a great deal about what they thought about the length of the judge. We have an off-the-cuff remark the from my close not working, but unlike the some the characters, I would be told that I can't read that. Because taken together, those three sections of our Constitution basically say that individual rights are protected from the overreach of government, that states' rights And I think, as many of our great scholars in the conservative movement are now noting, I think that we've sort of gotten to a place where maybe we think the core principle, the core tenet, the core value of our democracy is majority rules, but in fact, the core tenet of our democracy is individual liberty. And the reason that's so important, all the way back to my mother, potential and God-given gifts, the reason that's so important is because I think we have come to a pivotal time, truly, in our nation's history, it is why I am running for president, where the potential of too many Americans, the potential of this nation, is being crushed, literally, by the weight, the power, the cost, the complexity, the ineptitude, and the corruption of government. And we must 